So one of the challenges in CLL is certainly a recognition of um, poor outcomes when patients progress on covalent PTK inhibitors. For a number of years, we've had access to venetoclax, but I think it's important to note that there's really only one small study where we had defined what outcomes could look like for patients on venetoclax who had progressed on a covalent PTK inhibitor. That was a small phase two study that had not been updated in a long time. Um, the large randomized trials of venetoclax in the relapse refractory setting have not really included patients post-covalent PTK inhibitors. So we wanted to look at, in a real-world outcomes uh, study using EHR data, what happens to patients when they receive venetoclax, they've had prior covalent PTK inhibitor. And so we had just under 1,000 patients receiving venetoclax after a PTK inhibitor. And what we saw is that, really, unfortunately, their outcomes are not quite as good as we would hope. Um, we saw, uh, looking at the time to treatment discontinuation was short. Patients were on venetoclax for less than a year. And unfortunately, um, time to next treatment or death was reasonably short as well, less than three years. So that contrasts with uh, data for venetoclax in patients that have not had a covalent PTK inhibitor in the relapse refractory setting, where we see very good long-term outcomes, but it appears that's not quite uh, the case for patients when they're receiving venetoclax uh, post-covalent PTK inhibitor.